Royal Ascot is a marathon, not a sprint, and that's definitely the case with the highlight on day three. It is Gold Cup Day, and in this Racing Post postcast, uh, Paddy Power from our sponsors, Lewis Porches and Tony Hare are joining me, Lee said to look ahead to the day three action. We kick off with something that is very much not a marathon. It's a five furlong dash. It's the Norfolk Stakes, and we have another Wesley Ward juvenile heading the market. Do we not, Paddy? We certainly do, Lee. Uh, we have Mac Aaron, which is which is the one that everyone was talking about last week, wasn't it? Uh, Mac Aaron is seven to two favourite. Havana Gray is thirteen to two. You got Santry thirteen to two as well. True Blue Moon eight to one. Don't come easy ten to one and uh, nine below zero the same and 12 to one and bigger the rest. So yeah, it's a pretty open race. I mean, a lot of these Wesley Ward ones are very, very short. McAaron certainly back about a seven to two, but uh, not that you want my tips, but personally, I think Havana Gray is actually pretty solid. I think it's gonna be quite difficult to beat. So I think uh, McAaron wants to be pretty special to win this race, I think. Okay, Lewis, um, the Norfolk State is sometimes a race that can produce a relatively small field, but a bumper turnout this year looks wide open. That certainly does. Um McCarran's the one that's caught the eye in Newmarket apparently, it's meant to be a, a strapping beast, one of these Wesley Ward monsters, um, but there's some speedy ones from the home team here, um, I think Paddy makes a good point about Havana Gray, good, look, real quick in the uh, national stakes at Sandown last time, but I like Santry here, Lee, of Declan Carroll, it's nice to see a smaller stable Richard Spencer winning on the first day, and I think this could be one for for Declan's team um, up in the north, defied a penalty at York last time in a quick time, and just looks a real sort of speedster two-year-old ready to go here and now. Uh, Tony, we don't generally expect to see a, a Bally Doyle horse in this sort of race, starting at 20 to 1 with Juan Moore and Moore. But that, those are sort of prices about Sioux Nation. Is he just not good enough? Well, he doesn't look anything out of the ordinary on his form at home. I mean, he was eight lengths behind Jesse Harrington's uh, horse, Brother Bear, in the Marble Hill Stakes. He, Brother Bear ran quite respectably yesterday, but... Uh, I think Sioux Nation, the price says it all. He's certainly not one of their, their better two-year-olds. I prefer uh, the other Irish challenger, Joseph O'Brien's uh, True Blue Moon. Two from two. Again, form isn't outstanding, but I think he's an improving horse, and I think he'd uh, definitely be the better of the two. OK, that then is the Norfolk Stakes race. Two on day three is the Hampton Court Stakes brackets, formerly the Tercentenary. Um, again, a big field here. 16 horses declared for the mile and a quarter Group 3 race. Uh, Godolphin having a good Royal Ascot, well represented. Paddy, how do you bet? Yeah, so actually Michael Stites, Mirage Dancer is a favourite at 7-2. to two. Then Ben Battle for Godolphin, 9-2. to two. Irish Correspondent, 5-1. to one. Order of the Garter, 7-1. to one. Tam League seven to one, Bay of Poets ten to one, and twelve to one, and bigger the rest. Okay, um, Lewis Mirage Dance then for Stouty. Only two runs, very good effort last time. All good, well for the future. Does he look like a Hampton Court winner to you? It uh, could quite well be. Um, still a bit of a baby, I thought last time, to be honest. And it that's the, the worry I'd have coming here. Is, is it street wise enough to get the job done? Clearly. In the future, it's going to be a good horse, but I'd be probably wanting to take him on. I'd probably want to take Ben Battle on as well, coming out of the derby. I'm not that keen on horses coming here after the derby. I think it can leave a mark. At a huge price, I'm going to throw a couple of quid at Speedo Boy for Ian Williams. Awful draw in nine, uh, out wide in 16. However, this horse split um, Permian of Mark Johnson's and Khalidi last time at Newmarket. Both those horses ran in the derby. I mean, pertinence... Um, Permian is something like seven to one for King Edward the Seventh later in the week. So, and this horse is twenty-five to one and upwards for this. So, it, I, I think it could have gone in under the radar. Really rating Williams as a trainer, and I think it'll run well at a big price. Speedo Boy. Well, Speedo Boy gives us a seamless link to Tony O'Hare. Um, <laughs> Tony, um, Aiden again here, well represented. Um, it's it's a it's a contest that you'd imagine would be would be made for a, a Bally Doll type. Has he got the winner here? Uh, possibly, um, although Taj Mahal finished in front of Order of the Garter in the Prix Jockey Club, I'd, uh, I think um, Order of the Garter might be the better horse. His form early in the season was quite good. I think he might turn the tables on Taj Mahal and give him a good chance. Irish correspondent won his <clears throat> first uh, two races. He was well held in the Irish Guineas third uh, behind Churchill. I think the triple suited him. I wouldn't be too sure about the ground. And gold spinner of Jerry Lyons won his last two. Again, we'll have to see how he goes on the ground, but of the, the four Irish, Order of the Garter is the one I'd like. OK, um, Paddy, one, one theme um, this year going into this race, the Ribblesdale, which we'll look at after the break, and the King of the Seventh, is there's an extra week 
between Epsom and Royal Ascot, giving those classic horses more chance to recover from their Epsom exertions. Would, would that make you be more amenable to horses like Ben Battle coming from Epsom? You probably would. You probably, and the way, obviously, Ben Battle, particularly the way Godolphin have been going so far, uh, it's been pretty good. So even with their less fancied ones, but I think, um, yeah, I think that it definitely makes a difference. We, we see it as well in the Jumps Fest as well, when there's a bigger gap between the festivals. Obviously, the horse have more time to recover and everything it makes sense. I mean, I guess it's really, really hot here. Horses actually probably like that bit of sun on their back as well. So uh, I think, yeah, I think the extra week definitely makes a big difference for them. So it would be if that was a reason to put you off, it might temper your off-puttingness. And you, uh, for you, the win in Hampton Court is? Uh, I'm going to go for Irish Correspondent, actually. I think uh, I think looks like a real improver. I think the, the Guineas run was actually OK. as well beaten, like, seven lengths, but it was OK. I mean, Churchill's obviously much better than he, sh he showed yesterday, and it probably showed that Barney Roy mightn't actually be all that. He's only just beaten Lancaster Bomber. So I think, uh, I think Irish Correspondent could be a real improver. OK, Irish Correspondent then for Paddy in race two on Royal Ascot Day 3. We'll move on to race three 